Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So we have some XRP news today. We have some XDC news today. We have some Bitcoin news today. All right. XDC news. That, now, that's really rare. We'll get to that a little bit later. All right. Let's begin here. It says uh, this first article says Ripple VP is excited as Japanese giant is set to utilize XRP ledger for NFTs. Let's get straight into it. SBI as usual. I wonder how much respect people are actually paying them. Because SBI has stood by XRP for a long time, XRP Ledger. They're super bullish on it. They've already been testing it out a little bit, not majorly, a little bit. But they will be one of the biggest reasons if we get to that point in the future where XRP is unleashed. SBI uh, will be one of the biggest reasons why XRP's price can explode to mind-blowing degrees. 100%. I mean, they're always active. So now they have this World Expo in, in um, World Expo 2025 in Osaka. It, it says uh, it promises to be a showcase of innovation and in te- in technology. And XRP Ledger is set to partake via SBI. Remember, SBI is also one of those companies that has corridors all over the place. They have corridors in the, in the Philippines. Um, they're one of the reasons why XRP could possibly dominate in Japan. Although there's a myriad of companies that love XRP and XRPL in Japan. And Japan definitely is going to need um, that connector piece. It's going to need everything that XRP can offer. And Ripple has great uh, relationships in Japan as well. It's not just SBI, but SBI will be a huge part of that. Then SBI has a lot of connections in Africa. I mean, India, obviously. You know, so, um, I mean, they're just, they're, they're major when it comes to XRP and XRPL. Um, so it says Ripple Vice President Emi Yoshikawa has expressed excitement as the Japanese financial giant SBI group will be using XRP Ledger to mint visitor NFTs for the event. This move is a key milestone for Ripple in the wider usage of blockchain technology. All right. So that's definitely major. I love everything that SBI is doing with blockchain. Um, I like people who are loyal no matter what, no matter what pressures come. Ripple has been loyal. SBI has been loyal. There's a, there's a few. Um, they haven't backed away. They've continued forward, right? And a lot of the other banks as well, but they haven't done as much as SBI has done. Um, so, you know, we'll keep an eye on this and um, this should be interesting. It's just a beginning, obviously. So now we have this next next article here where David Schwartz is clearing some things up. It's titled Ripple CTL. I love this headline. The headlines, a lot of these headlines swerve you, but they're just made to be eye-catching. They're not actually what they appear to be. But this article was titled Ripple CTO. I don't need to keep working at Ripple (coughs) at Ripple. My apologies. I don't need to keep working at Ripple. It makes it sound like he's going to quit or something like that. That's not what the article is actually about. He's clearing up his relationship and why he's loyal to Ripple. You know, they treated him well. They made him certain position offers and such, which uh, he really didn't need. But it showed that they appreciated him. See, appreciation goes a long way. People don't get that. And it's a rare, rare thing. Appreciation. Telling someone, hey, listen, I appreciate you. I, but it, it's a different degrees of that, right? I appreciate you. Hey, I love you. Um, hey, man, thank you. So thank, so thank you. It's something so rare. You barely hear in the world anymore. You know, you hold the door open for somebody. They just go right in. They don't even say any, anything to you at all. It's rare. I watched a man the other day and traffic was coming down the street. Traffic stopped for him. It didn't have to stop for him. It can, you know how when cars, they just close that gap and there's a bunch of cars going by and um, you can't walk. It's simple as that. You can't go and nobody's going to help you go across that street, right? You just got to wait. But they didn't. They stopped. They let the man cross. And he had his hand. He had this. Uh, I don't know. It's maybe it's his phone in his hand or something like that. But it looked like a, wa- a Walkman. If you remember Walkman's, it looked like that. Anyway, he's holding something in his hand. And, and as he's crossing, he barely just like that. He just does like that. Not like a wave. Not, hey, thank you. And I just watched that. And I said, man, what is going on? You know? But anyway, most people will never understand the power of thanks, if power matters to you, but that's power, love, thanks, appreciation, that's power, that's rare, that's difficult, everything else is easy, 
Anger is easy. Hatred is easy. That's easy. Anybody could do that. A child could do that. Animal could be a, could be angry and upset. That's easy work. The difficult things are worth doing. The rare things are worth having like gold. Thank you is like gold. Appreciation is like gold. Platinum. And hey, I uh, the saying, I love you. That's like gold. That's like platinum. It's rare. To really mean that is even more rare. David Schwartz is trying to tell people, hey, listen. Some of these people here, like Chris Larson, he names names. He says, they show me respect. They showed me love. So I'm here and I'm loyal. I'll stop one day. Everybody's going to stop what they do one day. That's no brainer. But he says, I'll stop as soon as it's not fun anymore. That's what he said. That's a direct quote. It says, therefore, he will give up his high ranking position there, quote, as soon as it's not fun, unquote, anymore. And I understand that better than anybody. It's when you do something because you have chosen to do it. Choice, another powerful thing that people overlook. Everyone, not everyone. When I say everyone, I mean a lot of people. They feel like they have no choice in life anymore. And yes, you do. Yes, you do. You just have to be courageous and strong on the inside and know your path. And you choose your path and you walk your path. There is choice. But David Schwartz knows that choice. He's the, one of the rare people. I feel that way too. But me, I'm a little different. I'm going to make sure I have choice and utilize my choice because I know how rare it is. So he's saying, listen, I do the work because I love it. I do the work. I work here because I choose to. You know, to be fair, when you get that kind of respect, when you have that type of community structure in there and it's not about money. That's a different, that's almost a different degree of family. There's a lot of different types of family, folks. Sure, you born into one, you got your blood family. Sometimes your blood family might not even be your family. You get what I'm saying? But you have your blood family, which hopefully treats you well and loves you. Then you, you come by way of other people. You're not going to connect with everybody, but there's a few people out there. They're going to show you appreciation. They're going to listen to you. It's a, there, there's this indescribable aspect where you just know there's a connection there. That one there, that's a good one there. That's a different degree of family. There's different types of, there's different degrees of family, love, contentment. It's not all the same, but it's similar, similar. So anyway, that's pretty much the gist of that article. Let's move on here. Let's move on here. So now this article here is titled, What Could XRP Price Be If Ripple's Shares Hit $600 After IPO? Let's scroll right down here and get right to the point. I want to get right to that money. Bear with me. All right. So it says here, notably data from Link2 indicates that Ripple's pre-IPO shares currently trade for $44.69, much higher than $35 value last year. A surge from current figure would translate to a 1,242% increase in Ripple's valuation. Such a massive increase could favorably impact the price of XRP. Could, not a guarantee could. We have a lot. We have a lot of great catalysts actually. So I'm not worried about the IPO impact, but if it does, then I'll take that. That's just sprinkles on top. That's just a bonus. We have a lot of banks lined up that could possibly use XRP. I say possibly because they're they're lined up to use it. They signed up to use it, but you can't force them. You get what I'm saying? You can't force these people to do anything. All we can do is hope that they keep their word, you know, and uh, when the time is right, when the court case is over and they can finally use it because the court case is the only thing that has kept them from running wild with XRP. And the XRPL in every possible way to mind blowing degrees. Most people are really, really underestimating XRP and XRPL, period, period. They're underestimating it and they're forgetting, forgetting the explosiveness that it could have. But that's on them to each his own. I just know that's all I that's all I can tell you. I know. Um, but anyway. So even with or without this XRP is so bullish, it's mind blowing. Um, just like Quant is, just like Algorand, XLM, like all of them have this potentiality. 
But anyway, it says here, if XRP's price surged by a similar 1,242% rate expected of Ripple shares, it would hit $6.63 with no doubt about it. People would be seeing very good gains. They're sitting on a ton of XRP, a ton of XRP, just like when we get to XDC. You know, people are sitting on a ton of XDC. I've been sitting on a ton of XDC for a few years patiently, and I'm going to continue to be patient with it. I don't even say patience. This is nothing. I only speak for me. I only speak for me. Some things I don't play with. I know the potential of it. I put it on the cold wallet, which is what I did, and I just leave it there. And wait for the different catalysts to come into play. See what happens. But I don't talk about XDC a great deal. At one time, I covered it a lot. You know, when there's information to cover, then I cover it. But um, it remains one of the most potent pro uh, projects. I don't know how it, I jump from XRP to XDC because it just popped into my mind. That's just how we, I go with the flow. I don't fight the flow. I let the thoughts just flow. Let the mind be free. Let it flow. But I don't attach myself to the thoughts. I'm not attached to the thoughts. I just let it go. Let it flow. Makes it, it makes it a little bit more relaxing, you know, when you have a lot of thoughts flowing through your mind. Anyway, so now we have more XRP and Ripple news. So this article is titled Coinbase's ruling may send Ripple versus SEC to Supreme Court, which, according to experts, they say this is what they've said. Look it up. We've covered the articles extensively. But according to experts, if it went to Supreme Court, we would 100 percent hands down win. That's what they say. You know, who knows what the reality really is, but it was anything is possible. But if what they say is true, then that's good for us. It says a legal battle over XRP's wait, security class. What are they talking about? XRP? Are they sure that they're getting this correct? Let me let me scroll down. The legal battle between Ripple Labs and U.S. Securities Exchange Commission over classification of XRP as a security could be headed to the highest court. Like, are they are they sure about what they're saying? Because um, I'll say this. Well, let me scroll up here for a moment. I'll say this. What they're battling over is let's let's be clear. Institutional use is what they got. to They got to really clarify in these articles. XRP already has clarity itself, but. They're talking what they're battling over now is about institutional use or some ver, uh, degree of verbiage of that. Um, it says industry insiders are closely watching these developments with a former SEC official. Uh, Layden Stewart providing key insights. Stewart, who led the agency's crypto enforcement unit, believes the SEC is light unlikely to back down from pursuing regulatory actions in the cryptocurrency space. Her comments made a panel discussion at Columbia Business School highlight the potential for a landmark case to reach the Supreme Court. Quote, there will be some defin uh, definitive sort of clarity on that question, unquote, Stewart said, referring to the ongoing debate over how digital assets are classified under U.S. law. The crux of the issue lies in determining whether digital tokens themselves are inherently securities, which has nothing to do with us now. That's that's on everyone else. Um because once again, XRP already has its clarity. Ripple versus SEC unclear on rules. The debate underscores a central dilemma of the crypto industry that we know. Yeah, so the end of this is just about institutional use. And if it goes to Supreme Court, hopefully we will win. Seems like things are leaning in our favor. It says Ripple, meanwhile, has shown a strong commitment to fighting the SEC's claims. As CEO Brad Garlinghouse has declared the company's resolve stating, quote, we are in it till the end, unquote. Same here. Same here. A minute to the end. That's it. Right. That's my position. This unwavering stance coupled with Ripple's observation of past Supreme Court decisions favoring challengers to the SEC. That see, there you go. Favoring challengers to the SEC suggests a potentially long and significant legal battle ahead. We'll see how it all shakes out. Whatever, may, whatever comes, I'll handle it. I'll deal with it. I say I because I can't speak for others. I can't say we, you know, um, everyone has to decide for themselves how far they're willing to go. It's just the way that it is. So now let's move on here. And once again, I st I'm still stuck on that from the beginning. Like you got to clarify, you know, this could, well, you got to clarify. This is about institutional use now. XRP already has um, clarity in and of itself. It's not a security in and of itself. So now. 
This article here is titled, Tokenized Asset Market Could Hit $16 Trillion on Public Blockchains. This is from the Ripple X Vice President. It says, institutional investors, asset managers, and banks are racing to bring financial assets on chain in a market estimated to grow to $16 trillion in value. It says, traditional finance firms have warmed up to the idea of tokenizing financial assets on public blockchains as the race toward blockchain-based tokenization heats up. According to RippleX Senior Vice President Marcus and Fanger, TradFi players are finally bringing financial assets on chain as they look to deploy for production and solve pain points in various value chains. Speaking exclusively to Cointelegraph during Paris Blockchain Week, and Fanger said that TradFi's use of blockchain is finally becoming tangible. Quote, we're starting a paradigm shift for blockchain technology. Moving beyond the hype and into real utility is starting to unfold, unquote, and Fanger said. The executive that said the, that research estimates pin the future value of tokenized markets at $16 trillion. Now you see why Ripple was so... Um, Filled with the zeal about the tokenization of real world assets at the earlier, earlier point of this year. Uh, it says, which is eight times bigger than the total market capitalization of the entire cryptocurrency sector. Quote, a couple of years ago, many of us in this space were, were envisioning that it's getting closer to reality and is happening on public blockchains. At some point, it looked like it would only happen on JP Morgan coin or IBM, unquote, who open sourced their worldwide thing. I don't know if anyone's going to actually use it. Um, but, you know, let's move on here to another article. So $16 trillion is nothing small. So now this article, and we're starting to get to a little bit of the Bitcoin news. This article is titled Bitcoin primed to skyrocket by up to 219% predicts hedge fund veteran Anthony Scaramucci. Here's the timeline. Everyone's coming out with their timeline timelines now. <laughs> um, am I correct in, in remembering that the Bitcoin halving, is this supposed to happen today? I'm not sure what time it's supposed to happen. Did it already happen? I don't know. By the time this video gets out, maybe it'll, it'll already have happened. But once again, usually there's lag. We went over that in, a, in an article, a video or two ago. There's usually some lag. It takes some time for things to kick in a few months, maybe a year or so. But, you know, um, we'll see how it all works out. It says Skybridge Capital founder Anthony Scaramucci says Bitcoin is on track to soar more than 200 percent within 12 months. In a new interview on CNBC Squawk Box, which is good because in my humble opinion, because it gives if people are, in, are not in position yet just yet, it gives them some time to get in position. It says in a new interview on CNBC, and there's going to be rises and falls in between that before the big one happens. So it'll still still be fun. There'll still be money to make, in my humble opinion, not financial advice. All right. But um, it provides a, a, a gap where there's still fun to be had, money to be made. But at the same time, if people are not in position, they could get in position before the big explosion happens. And. Time and time again, we've seen that this cycle has repeated. It's has uh, been on repeat and each time it's been massive. It says in a new interview on CNBC Squawk Box, the hedge fund veteran says that the expected continual adoption of Bitcoin will keep driving the value higher and reduce price volatility. Quote, I wish I could understand the price moves myself. Where I'm coming from is a little bit of a longer term as opposed to just the week to week or day to day price movements. I feel the same, like pretty much most of the things that I'm involved in. Um, I'm long. I'm a long term holder of those things, a long term believer in those things. It says, I think the point I'm trying to make is that Bitcoin is on the adoption curve. If you go back to web, the Web one, Bitcoin is sort of in the 1999 point of the spectrum. Just imagine where we went from Web one to where we are today. And so my point is, you don't. You won't see this be an inflation hedge or a store of value, as other pundits are saying, until you get over a billion users. And so right now, it's going to be way more volatile than people like. And people look at it 
look at it as a risk on or risk off trade until we get to the adoption curve, unquote. Scaramucci predicts Bitcoin will soar to as much as $200,000 within a year, a 219% increase from the current value. However, he warns Bitcoin is at risk of declines of up to 15% in cases of unforeseen calamitous events. Quote, you could get shocks like people, you know, boom, 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 you know, combat situations. I'm trying to say that so I don't get in trouble with YouTube. They're very, very strict on my channel. I, I don't know how other people's channels are, but I say the wrong thing and yeah, there's it's not good. It says like certain things and you could get forbid a certain calamity. I got to skip a lot of what he's saying. Calamity or something like that could take down Bitcoin 10 to 15 percent. But I think you have a heavy bid on Bitcoin because of demand from ETFs and from the eventual drivers of things like the wirehouses that will enter the space, as well as the 401k market. Great points. Very, very good point, sir. It says, so I don't think you have 50% downside, but you could have 10% or 15% downside just because it's still a risk on risk off asset. But long term, with the halving coming this week, I think things uh, this thing trades at to one hundred and seventy thousand dollars, possibly to two hundred thousand. And that's consistent with uh, where it's been over the, the 15 years of Bitcoin. Don't forget also outflows that could possibly go into other things like treasuries. If the treasuries actually hit five percent yields, keep that in mind. So listen, yeah. That's why the, the video yesterday was Vanguard's warning, right? But I didn't think I had to go elaborate too greatly because we've covered so many things about treasuries um, and their impact on crypto. Now, that percentage goes up, then people start wanting to buy those treasuries to make that delicious yield, right? So they'll take um, their capital value from risk assets like crypto and other things, and they'll put it into those treasuries to make that yield. So there's always that relationship there. That's why that was... That was significant. Um, of course, when that does happen, sure, the people who are already in, there's going to be a lot of selling uh, because as that uh, yield goes up, typically the, the prices go down. Um, so there's a lot of selling at first. But what's happening is, uh, is others are coming in to replace those who are selling and then they will buy to get that 5% yield or whatever it's going to be. Um, that's at least my understanding. If you understand something different, you let me know and correct me. I'm always open to correction. No big deal. Uh, but that's why that was significant. So I put that right alongside with what he's saying here as something that could be impactful. That's why I always watch what's going on with treasure treasuries. All right. Not only that, but to to, to make some money off of treasuries, <laughs> treasuries as well. <laughs> All right. So it's dual. So now let's move on here. Let's see what else we have. We have a Bitcoin halving article, but I'll probably skip that one so we can get to the XDC news. All right. So let's get to the XDC news because it's so rare uh, to have articles written about some of these other bank coins. You know, it's mind blowing to me how potent they are, but they're never written about. So let's get to this one. So this article is titled XDC Network, the rising real world asset chain shaping the future of asset tokenization. My chest, it says. In the evolving world of financial technology, real world assets tokenization has emerged as a pivotal shift in how investors and institutions perceive and engage with digital assets. In this key moment for blockchain technology, the adoption of RWAs from BlackRock marks a significant shift towards the blockchain adoption. Since its launch in 2019, XDC, formerly known as Zenfin Network, has been dedicated to solving real world problems through innovative blockchain solutions. This focus on practical applications of blockchain technology has positioned XDC Network as a critical player in the industry, enhancing the potential of RWA tokenization. It says here, the XDC Next section, the XDC Network ecosystem features a range of real world asset projects, XDC Network's fast transaction times, interoperability, Minimal fees alongside its environmentally friendly design has created a wide ranging ecosystem of RWA projects looking to seamlessly integrate into the digital economy. It says XDC has been trusted by a wide range of platforms and established industry leaders in traditional finance. BlackRock's 
Recent tokenized U.S. Treasury, for example, uses Securitize, which lists XDC Network in its top four supported networks. That's power. That's potency. I mean, this network, you know, <laughs> this is what I was saying before. XDC always blows my mind. Zenfin, they blow my mind because they're in so it's, it's they're in so deep with a lot of powerful entities. And yet they're almost, I never hear them spoken about. Never. It's, it's as if the information is suppressed on purpose, right? And I say it like that because I know some people would disagree. But how do you have some, some a company so potent? Their partnerships are all massive. And yet they're never spoken about. I think the same thing, like... It, it, a lot of these companies, I do truly believe that they're being suppressed. Their information is being suppressed to keep regular people out. Like, for example, people almost I never hear anyone talk about Chainlink and Swift anymore. How does how does Chainlink being partnered with Swift? How is that not the most bullish thing ever? But everyone will talk about Swift gloriously. Oh, Swift. If anyone partners with Swift, but then Chainlink did. And it's like, eh, whatever. Whatever. I just don't understand that. I look at it very quizzically. Anyway, BlackRock, Securitize, XDC. There you have a connection, which lists XDC network in its top four supported networks. More directly, XDC has established a joint unit with Japan's SBI group. SB, same SBI, the super bullish on XRP. SBI, XDC network, APAC to develop and deploy innovative solutions provided by the XDC network, which we covered that a little bit. I think it was about a year or a year ago, a year and a half ago. We covered those articles through efficiency and established credibility with globally compliant financial giants. XDC network has become a premier place to challenge tr traditional financial uh, systems and create unique innovate and innovative solutions for tokenizing real world, world assets. Comtech Gold, Comtech Gold, for example, is a digital asset backed by physical gold, where each CGO token represents one gram of gold stored securely in UAE vaults. Similarly, Kinesis Money, K-A-U-K-A-G, introduces gold and silver based digital currencies, offering a stable and transparent exchange and wealth protection medium. XDC Network also powers stable coins like Fathom Dollar and Stasis. In case of Fathom Dollar, F FXD is a stable coin pegged to US dollar, supported by over collateralized XDC tokens offering real world asset yield from the Fathom Vault. Stasis offers a digital euro. It says, uh, whether the RWA is a precious metal, stable coins, tokenized treasuries, or anything else you can imagine, XDC's network infrastructure characterized by fast transactions, Minimal, minimal fees and enhanced interoperability makes it an ideal ecosystem for RWA tokenization. All right. So listen, this is a great article for anyone who wants a very potent base layer of information on Zenfin because they do much, much more than this. They're involved in much, more, much, much more than this. Um, but I hope uh, that they continue to do well because I expect a lot out of them in the future. So now let's move on here. I think this might be a very little quick article here. It's from wolfstreet.com, but I like to keep up with this type of information. We haven't covered it in quite some time. Mortgage rates over 7% and heading higher. Housing market still frozen. Lots of buyers on strike as price is still too high, of course. Mortgage rates continue to trudge higher from the abandoned rate cut mania low. The average uh, conforming 30-year fixed mortgage rate rose to 7.13% in the latest week, the highest since early December, according to Mortgage Bankers Association today, as the 10-year Treasury yield has resurged, we covered that yesterday, has resurged amid the Fed's vigorous backpedaling on its December rate cut visions after the presumed vanquished inflation raised its ugly head again, as I'd said it would, and it did. The NBA's... Um, measure of the average 30-year fixed mortgage rate has risen 37 basis points from the rate cut mania low of 6.776% in early uh, January. 
still going higher, a daily measure produced by Mortgage News Daily, which leads the fray by a few days, surpassed 7.13% a week ago and hit 7.50% yesterday. The highest rates since mid-November when rate cut mania was two weeks old. Today, it's at 7.43%. At the end of October, the measure kissed a 8% for a day. Mortgage applications to purchase a home have been wobbling near the record lows set in November and then again in February and the data going back to 1995. The cute mini spike after the holidays during the waning days of rate cut mania only lasted a couple of weeks, though it created all kinds of hoopla and didn't really budge much from the record lows. All right, so now let's see what we have left. We have two articles left. We made it to the end, folks. So we have a U.S. debt article, and then we have a bank reserve. Man, and they're both potent. I really don't want to skip either one. All right, let's get both of them in. Why not? Put that hard work in around here. Once again, shout out to, to the members only section, all right? <laughs> this is the members only section. <laughs> why? Why? I put in the extra work, all right? <laughs> All right. So I love that members only section. Thank you, everybody. They are the reason that these videos happen. I'm telling you, folks. All right. So let's get this in. All right. For the good people. This article is titled Worsening U.S. Debt Outlook Seen in More Gold and Bitcoin Than in Bonds. All right. Let me let me actually enlarge this just a little bit. Bear with me one moment, please. Just one moment. All right says con concern about the rapidly rising U.S. government debt is partly behind recent surges in gold prices and Bitcoin, even as the Treasury market so far remains relatively sanguine about the country's fiscal path. Market observers say the U.S. budget deficit widened to one point seven trillion in fiscal year 2023 and is on track to reach two point six trillion by 20 2034, according to the con Congressional Budget Office. U.S. government debt held by the public, meanwhile, is on pace to reach a record 106 percent of gross domestic product in 2028, up from 97 percent in fiscal year 2023. It has soared 27 trillion dollars from 17 trillion dollars in early 2020 and five trillion dollars in 2007. It says the unchecked growth of U.S. government debt is gaining more attention as interest rate payments. Mm hmm. Also take a larger bite of the government's budget. That's a problem. In some months, exceeding spending on national defense. People don't understand what is coming. The worsening trajectory has boosted demand for Bitcoin and gold, which are often used as a hedge against inflation and the depreciating purchasing power of the U.S. currency. Quote, concerns about the U.S. debt cycle devaluation of money and fiat money in particular does drive the story and the narrative, unquote, said Brad Betchel, global head of FX at Jefferies. All right. So now let's move on from there to here. All right. Let's get this one in this last article. And this one here, I've been talking about it, the deposit flight. Everyone's taking their money out of the banks. A lot of people taking their money out of the banks, um, putting it into gold, silver, Crypto sometimes, um, money market funds, things like that, things of that nature. Uh, pretty much uh, uh, treasuries also anywhere they can get a good a good yield, you know, and battle inflation. So now we're just going to end off with just a little tidbit here. This article is titled "U.S. Bank Reserve Balances See Largest Drop Since 2022 Tax Season." It says holdings dropped by two hundred and eighty six billion dollars in the week of April 6th, April 17th. It says amount of cash parked at the Fed still in abundant territory. OK, put a number on it, put a number on it and let's see a comparison to where where it is now to where it is before. That's what I would want to see. Let me go back here for one moment. I just want to see something. Bear with me one moment, please. I'm going to go to Yahoo Finance and just see if they have any extra information on this here. The amount of reserves in the banking system, a key determinant for the Federal Reserve, continues shrinking its balance sheet, dropped by most in two years as Americans paid income income tax bills out of their bank accounts. 
Bank reserves totaled $3.3 trillion in the week through April 17th from $3.62 trillion the prior week, Fed data showed. The $286 billion decline is the largest since April 2022 tax deadline. They're in tr- the banking industry is in trouble. There's no, I think everybody should be able to see it by now. Market participants and policy make, that's a fact. Look at those numbers. I've been saying it for three years, but it's not just words. It's happening. Actions are taking place. $286 billion decline. That's startling. It says market participants and policymakers are closely tracking the amount of cash banks park at the Fed to gauge what level is sufficient to maintain liquidity and avert ructions in financial markets. As reserves push closer to scarcity, a level of uh, a level primary dealers estimate to be between three trillion and three point two five trillion, the U.S. central bank will likely have to, re- to consider altering the trajectory of its balance sheet unwind, a process known as quantitative tightening. The current tally suggests reserves are running at a level policymakers would characterize as abundant, characterize as abundant, that their verbiage is so technical. Something could be right near the level of destruction. And yet, because of a technicality, they'll say, no, it's still good. (laughs) I really don't trust their verbiage. It says, And they're aiming for ample. You see that? So abundant is not good enough. They need ample. There's different degrees, but they're not putting a number on those degrees, right? And they're not giving us a comparison, but let's keep going. It says, which Chair Jerome Powell defined at a press conference after last month's policy meeting as, quote, a little bit less, unquote, than that. Still, minutes of that gathering showed a vast majority of officials judged it would be prudent to slow the pace of runoff fairly soon. For now, short-term funding markets have been stable and stress-free, which offers considerable flexibility as officials consider the path ahead for quantitative tightening. If the Fed lets reserves shrink too much, it risks triggering volatility in overnight funding markets, similar to what was seen in September 2019. However, too many reserves consume bank capital and inhibit lending and ensure the Fed bank maintains a large footprint in the treasury cash and repo markets. Scarcity has caused problems in the past, most notably September 2019, when a confluence of factors, including a sudden increase in corporate tax payments, along with a slug of bond issuance, prompted demand for liquidity to suddenly surge. That sent overnight funding markets into a tailspin and forced the Fed to intervene. We live in interesting time, folks. And so, that, you know, listen, I always I, I like finance.yahoo.com. They give you like a little bit more. Actually, give us a lot more information. <laughs> They're always a good source. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with that? I know what I'm going to do with this. So until next time, let's get to the money.